Hi there, welcome to an A-level and IB economics video looking at uh, price capping in regulated markets. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to build an analysis of price capping as a form of regulating monopoly power. And we'll also focus on some of the key evaluation arguments uh, for and against this type of regulatory intervention. In the context of the UK, a good example to use for application is the energy price cap. Uh, this table, for example, shows the current caps set by the regulatory body Ofgem, uh, which limits how much a gas, in this case, or electricity supplier can charge for each unit of gas and electricity for standard variable tariffs standard credit tariffs, and also they have different caps for prepayment meters. Now, this doesn't mean that, um, that there's a cap on how much you can pay in total for your energy. Obviously, you've got a bigger family with bigger energy needs, for example, you're going to pay more, but it caps the amount that can be charged for each unit. And in the case of standard credit, it's £106.56 per kilowatt hour. So uh, this is a good example of a, of a price cap. By the way, the, the off the regulator off gem has just said recently that the price cap for domestic energy bills in the UK is going to go up in 2021 to cover increased suppliers costs and the typical customer is probably going to see their bill go up by probably hundred pounds to well over 1,100 pounds per year now as the UK remains in a pandemic and a deep recession uh, this hike in fuel bills certainly risks causing yet more levels of fuel poverty Okay, so here is our analysis of how a price cap can work. Keep in mind, when you're drawing the diagrams in economics, make them really clear. Half a side of a page of A4 is a good, good size for a diagram. Label, draw to the axes and things. Here's our analysis of how a price cap can work. We're going to start with an unregulated monopoly. So our opening diagram shows a profit-maximizing monopolist setting price at P1 with an equilibrium output of Q1. And the profit is shown by the, the yellow shaded area. The super normal profit is area P1, B, uh, C, A, C1. Quite a big level of super normal profit there uh, above cost. Now, crucially, uh, to get top marks for analysis, if you can bring in the concept of consumer surplus, which is a key measure of economic welfare, then you can lift your analysis marks to another level. So the consumer surplus at the equilibrium price and output is the area A, P1, B, the area underneath the demand curve and above the price charged by the monopolist. Now, this is before we regulate the monopoly. And of course, the regulator may decide that level of super, super normal profit is too high. They want to cap the price to control the monopoly power and perhaps help consumers. Well, assume now the industry regulator uses their power, their legal power, to set a maximum price cap, a price ceiling, if you like, for the monopoly supplier. Have a think initially about where that cap must be to be binding and have any effect on the market. Well, it must be set below the monopoly price. The price cap must be set below the normal monopoly price uh, and we'll label that price D. So there's our price cap. Now, if the price cap becomes the new marginal and average revenue curve for the firm, essentially they're going to try and sell as much energy as they can at that price, then they'll probably now supply output Q2 at price D. The lower price causes an extension along the demand curve from B to E because lower prices, in theory, encourage an extension of demand. And consumer surplus, again, a measure of economic welfare, originally A, P1, B. Now it goes up to A, uh, D, E, which is a gain of P1, B, E, D. Or P1, anyway. P1, D, E, B, whichever way you go, there's a trapezium, which is again in consumer surplus. Now, part of the significance of this cap is that it's been set at the allocatively efficient price, where price equals marginal cost. Uh, you can set it as high or low as you want, and of course, that the, the lower the cap, in theory, the bigger the impact on the consumer. Well, what's the impact on monopoly profit? The, the original profit is shown by the yellow shaded area. 
Now at that new price D, then the level of profit will go down. In fact, there's the new profit. Originally, P1, B, C, A, C1. Profit now falls to D, E, F, A, C1. So a fall in profit. Original profit, new profit. Original profit, new profit. You can see a price cap will have an impact on the supply. What are the main arguments in favour of price capping? When you think about the evaluation points that you can put into your answers, your assessments. Well, the obvious point, I guess, but obvious points have value, is that a cap lowers bills and reduces prices for consumers. And in particular, if you cap energy bills, if you cap food prices, for example, who knows, but energy bills is a good example, uh, that might have a particular effect on low-income households uh, for whom uh, the energy bill is a quite a sizable percentage of their monthly budget. Uh, it, it also regulates profits. Uh, and those profits, in theory, could be used to act as a kind of barrier to entry. Firms may use their profits to create excess capacity and investment and things. Which, I mean, in theory, firms have can use their high profits perhaps to, to use limit pricing to squeeze out competitors. Uh, in, again, a, a, a benefit to businesses, not the energy suppliers themselves, but people, businesses who use energy, is that the cap could reduce their costs, their variable costs. And if enough businesses in the economy are impacted, it could increase aggregate supply in the short term. Price capping is a way of controlling the rate of inflation, which might mean that central banks keep interest rates lower. And the fifth point I think is quite important. If you cap the price, I won't show you this in this video, but if you cap the price at D, well, the firm's profits go down. But of course, they could say, right, we're going to try and control our costs here. So if we can limit our costs, raise productivity, become more productively efficient, for example, if we could shift our costs down, MC and AC, shift them down to the right, then even at that cap, we can make higher profits. And you might want to visualise how you would show that in a diagram, how at the capped price D, lower costs would lead to higher profits. Of course, on the other hand, some people are critical of a price cap. They, they emphasise the downsides and the drawbacks. What are they? Well, let me give you three. One is that, of course, a business that's capped may not be able to pay uh, sufficiently high wages. That the prof less profitable businesses, that the people who work for those businesses, and many thousands of people work for utilities in telecom and energy and so on, they may have their, their real wages squeezed. Indeed, if firms are looking to cut costs, there could be some significant job losses. The second point is slightly counterintuitive. If you're capping the price in a market, it may well dissuade or prevent some new entrants into the market. You see, for example, if, uh, if you've got some smaller firms, perhaps providing renewable sources of, of electricity, if the electricity tariff is capped, those smaller firms may not have such low costs. They haven't maybe achieved the economies of scale. So capped prices, if they apply to them as well, might actually counterintuitively dissuade them from entering the market. That makes the market less contestable. And although in this video, and this is the final point, um, so thank you if you stuck with it. Although uh, consumer surplus goes up, in theory, yes it does, uh, producer surplus goes down and uh, profits have value. Profits can sometimes have a purpose. If you're a utility company, for example, if profits are down, there may be less money to invest in research and development. Uh, there might be less money to spend in, on improving the network quality or network infrastructure um, maintenance and improvement. Uh, and so that could damage the quality of service to customers in the long term. And profits are taxed, and providing these companies are paying their fair, equitable share of tax. If the cap reduces profits, then the government will get, le will get less in in taxes such as corporation tax. So plenty of arguments on the other side for and against. Now, quite a, quite a diet of theory there with, a, with one application. But if you get a question on monopoly, government policies towards monopoly, one option is for the regulator to cap the market. There are many other alternatives, of course, but hopefully this video has given you a good revision focus on price capping in regulated markets.